Hi, I'm Ted Venema. Let's talk today about hearing loss and dementia. We're hearing an awful lot about the link between hearing loss and dementia and Alzheimer's disease lately. Some of it's good, but I think sometimes it's taken a little bit too far. Sometimes an association between two things is being taken for a cause of something, and I think that's the issue here. Let's look at, some, at this a little more closely. Around November 2013, I was at work and twiddling my thumbs when I should have been working, and, and an article drifted across my desk, and it was uh, called Brain Atrophy and Hearing Loss, and it was in something called the Hear Healthy Hearing, June 25, 2013. And health magazines like this are intended for the general public. They're meant to be easy to read. But it was talking about, you know, it's, it's like, hmm, it was talking about a kind of a causal link between hearing loss and dementia. So when you're looking at health mags like this, it helps to look at the actual article it was referring to itself. So I did that. I poured into, went on the internet, found the article, hearing loss in older adults. Hearing Affects Neural Systems Supporting Speech Comprehension, written by authors Peel and, uh, oh gosh, let's see, Peel and uh, a bunch of people, mucky mucks. At any rate, this was the original article in, the he in that little uh, healthy hearing thing, and it referred to this article here, which is written in detail. Like, all peer-reviewed articles, it starts with an abstract, goes into an introduction, and then talks about a method of their statistics that they used, and then they look at the results of their statistical analysis, and then finalize with a discussion and a summary. And so it was a very thorough, rigid article done scientifically, and it had two experiments it was doing. One experiment was to see if there was a, if sensory neural loss causes or is associated, I should say, with a reduction of cortical activity in the brain, linguistic cortical activity. And a second experiment was, is there actual cortical cell reduction in the language areas of the brain because of this or, or associated with sensory neural loss? So, they were really looking at, at a relationship between cortical activity and actual cortical brain cell loss. And they were looking to see if there was a relationship there. Well, now I'm going to advance to the next slide here, and we'll look at relationships. This is called a scatter plot. This is, I just made this, you know, a degree of hearing loss and amount of brain cell loss. And, you, and this is just a hypothetical thing, but just to show, okay, each dot is a person. And so in this particular case, you know, as the degree of hearing loss got worse, there was more and more brain cell loss. And when you do a line of best fit across there, you can see, yeah, there's kind of a pattern here. You know, there seems to be a relationship. The statistic often used is called a Pearson R. This family of statistics looks at relationships. Now, it used to be thought that smoking, there was a relationship between smoking and lung cancer. Later on, it was actually proven that smoking causes lung cancer. And that's a different statistical family, okay? But relationships is one thing, cause is another. And I think that's where people are often making mistakes when looking at hearing loss and dementia. I'll just carry on here. Sometimes I'm looking at some notes, but bear with me. They did, this, this first study used magnetic resonance imaging, functional magnetic resonance imaging, to look at cortical activity. And they did, they had, their subjects had only mild borderline sensory neural loss, which was, I found interesting, only 30 to 35 decibel sensory neural loss. And what they did was they presented sub sentences to these people that were gradually increased in syntactical difficulty. And also the, the rate of presentation was increased gradually. And all the listener had to do was identify if the speaker was male or female. Well, yeah, their subject in both experiments, they, they did find that, yep, there was an a, a, a increased difficulty in doing this task when the person had increased uh, or sensory neural hearing loss. And so 
Then they did the other study of looking at actual cortical cell loss, and yep, they found that there was a little bit of, there was the right temporal lobe, there was a bit of cortical loss that was associated with the sensory neural hearing loss. Now, I find that rather interesting too because the dominant speech hemisphere of the brain in most people is the left temporal lobe. But at any rate, I thought that was, at the end of their paper they discussed then, hmm, maybe peripheral sensory neural loss does result in an increased effort that's required to listen. And this increased effort robs the listener of being able to concentrate on processing linguistic information. Well, fair enough hypothesis, I suppose. What the heck? They, they wonder if there's a, 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 a causal role. At any rate, Right around the same time as I saw that article, I saw a prior, I saw another article, and it was this one here. It was in, out of Johns Hopkins called Use It or Lose It, Hearing Loss and Dementia Linked. And I, again, it was an easy to read popular journal, so I looked at the actual article from whence that, the, that this one was quoting, and it was called Hearing Loss and Incident Dementia by Frank Lynn, MD, PhD, and a bunch of other people. And I pulled, so I pulled up that article, looked closely at it, and analyzed it. Now this article was different. It was a longitudinal study of about 600 people over the course of 12 years. And it was trying to find out if there's an association between sensory neural loss and dementia. And so they followed people, they, they followed, they, all the people were between 39 and 90 years old, and they were described as dementia-free. There was four groups of hearing loss, normal hearing, mild, moderate, and severe, and the results of their longitudinal analysis over 12 years was that there was a statistically significant association again between hearing loss and dementia. Interestingly, they also said there's no evidence to suggest that self-reported hearing aid use was associated with a reduction of, of dementia risk, but well, anyway. The authors of this first paper, or of this second uh, paper, I should say, hypothesized just like the first one, saying, yeah, we found an association, who knows, maybe there's also a causal connection. Now, my thought is, it's a mistake and it's too easy to believe that topics or studies describing an association, if they're not read well, people can easily be led to believe that these studies are saying that there's a causal link. And I would be quite careful there. As clinicians, when we advertise, all of that stuff, we need to be careful and step above this. We really do. Let's call it really what it is. There's an association. Well, it makes sense for common sense. You have an elderly person with early dementia, and if that person's got a whopping hearing loss and is isolated from the public, well sure, that's not going to do that person any good at all. Actually, that may aggravate the dementia. I can't, there's no difficulty in believing that. But to say that hearing loss causes dementia is a little bit nerve-wracking, I find. And at any rate, a third article came out, and this one was done by, an art, uh, by uh, researchers at the University of North Texas, along with Unitron, a hearing aid manufacturer located in Kitchener, Ontario. And theirs was a rehabilitative focus study. And it's ongoing right now, it's not completed, but they're taking people with mild dementia and they're looking and they've had no previous hearing aid usage at all. And they want to find out if hearing aid usage is getting them into the game, getting them to play, getting them to, 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 to be involved with things as it is. And they want to know specifically, they want to know specifically, does it help their abilities hearing speech and noise? They want to know, does it help their overall cognitive abilities? And they want to know if it helps their own self-reported improvements in quality of life. They want to know whether improved hearing can help those with dementia to lead more in active and engaged lives, particularly if the loss is treated early. That makes perfect sense to me. Good study. Why not? It's at least a, a positive way of encouraging clients who need hearing aids to get hearing aids. And we're shying away from this negative kind of advertising that says, you better get uh, hearing aids or you're going to get dementia. That kind of stuff is 
it's at, that's a load of crap. We are c creatures of communication. Hearing involves communication, and communication keeps us in the game of living. We wear glasses the better to see. We wear hearing aids the better to hear. That's what I take from these articles. Let's love our elderly and help them all we can with their hearing. Cheers. <laughs>